Callouts are a great feature that help draw attention to something important on the screen. We provide a lot of different callouts to choose from, including arrows to point directly to something specific in your video, spotlight, which darkens everything on the screen except for the area you want to focus on, text callouts, which are pretty self-explanatory and are great for easily adding text anywhere in your video. There's also a blur callout to hide certain areas of your recording that you don't want everyone to see, like login information. And we've even added some new sketch motion callouts, which makes it look like you're drawing right on the screen. Let me show you the process for adding callouts to your video projects. The first thing you'll need to do is position the playhead on the timeline, where you want to insert a callout. Exact placement of the playhead isn't that critical at this point, because it's pretty easy to adjust placement later. In this example, I want to add a callout to point to the notepad document and calculator when the audio mentions each of them. Audio can be a big help for determining when callouts should be placed on the timeline, so that it's in sync and looks right. Next, select the Callout tab and click on the Add Callout button. This will add the most recently used callout to the timeline on a new track and also place it on the canvas. If you like hotkeys, the C key on the keyboard will also quickly add a callout to your timeline. If the callout that was added isn't the one you want, then expand the shape menu and choose a new callout from the list. Here's where you'll find the ones I showed you earlier, like the spotlight, text, blur, and the sketch motion callouts. I recommend that you play around with all of these to see which ones you like but I'll stick with the arrow callout for this tutorial. Note that the callout is layered on top of the video and can be positioned anywhere by dragging it on the canvas. Grab one of the corners to resize it. You can even free rotate the callout using this handle in the center. I'll point it to the notepad document since this is when the audio is mentioning it. To change the properties of the selected callout, expand these menus to change the border color and width the fill color, and many different effects. Some callouts even allow you to add text to them as well. Again, play around with each of these properties to learn how to customize the look of your callouts. With the callout looking the way you want it, let's now look at the placement of the arrow callout on the timeline. Position the playhead just before the callout and play back the video. I like using my spacebar to play and pause my video on the timeline. Does the callout align with the audio? Does it fade in and disappear at the right times? If the placement of the callout needs to be modified, click and drag it to a new location on the track so that it syncs up with the audio. To adjust the fade in and fade out properties, use these sliders to set the desired length, or manually enter in the number of seconds. In this example, the callout stays visible for too long, so the duration needs to be adjusted. Hover over one of its edges until you see a double arrow. Click and drag the edge of the callout to the desired length or duration. To create the exact same callout to point to the calculator, right click the callout and choose Copy. Position the playhead where you want the new callout and paste. Then you'll need to rotate or flip the callout to point it to the calculator and adjust the placement on the timeline as needed. One final tip that I want to share in this tutorial is that callouts are layered on the timeline just like they are layered on the canvas. If this callout lived on a track below the video, it wouldn't show up because it's actually layered underneath the video clip. This works the same for all media that is present on the timeline, so just keep that in mind when working through your projects.